For more on this, let's bring in Wendell Trio, who joins us now from Brussels. He is the director of the nonprofit Climate Action Network Europe. Uh, Wendell, good to have you over uh, on the show. Um, I'd like to believe that lawmakers actually rely on economics and uh, forecasting economic models when they uh, or when they're guided in 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 in, in making decisions in, in lawmakings. I mean, when you look at the numbers, it doesn't take a genius to see that it actually pays to make the right choice. That is very much true. But unfortunately, when we hear about discussions on climate action and climate change, uh, most decision makers will focus on what does it cost us to take action? What does it cost us to reduce greenhouse gas emissions um, in the atmosphere? And only very poorly uh, people are looking at what are the real economic costs if we don't act. And that's actually what is needed. We need to put the cost of action against the cost of inaction. And then we see, like this report shows, that we see a growing occurrence of extreme weather events that actually cost us a lot of money. Unfortunately, we have with climate change this lack of a direct link between what you do, what you emit in terms of CO2 in the atmosphere, and who will actually be affected by uh, the impacts of those emissions. And that's where it becomes a bit more complicated um, to take decisions. Um, all right. You ask, yeah, we should be asking the question, what's it going to cost us? Yes, islands are going to be submerged. There are going to be millions of people uh, forced into, uh, into mass migration. But there is an actual cost. I mean, um, when you looked at developed economies, 7 to 10 percent uh, reduction of current GDPs, this is a huge, huge cost that no one can afford to pay if we're going to continue with the system. Indeed. And unfortunately, this is only happening, I mean, what, is, what we see happening now is only happening at a temperature increase of more or less 1.2 degrees Celsius. We know that with current policies, we are going towards 2.5 or even 3 degrees of warming by the end of this century. And the impacts of those increase in warming will only be additional and will be much, much higher uh, than what we see now with estimates saying that uh, we might reduce GDP in Europe by around 15% on average by 2050. But in many of the developing and definitely in the most poor countries of the world, those impacts will be half to even 60 or 70 percent of their overall income. So the, 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 uh, the situation is dire and we need to act now also in order to prevent what's coming in the future. But this report really shows it's not only about the future. We already see the impacts happening now. I think that is an important message of these reports. It is happening right now, and especially in, in rich Western countries. I mean, there is a growing financial exposure. When you look at sort of uh, homes that are located in uh, prone or flooding prone areas, insurance costs are going up. Uh, if you have a home in California, it is very difficult to get uh, insurance on your home against uh, wildfires. So the reality is not... Uh, it, it, in a year or two, it's at our doorstep. Indeed. And I think that um, maybe for the very first time, we have actually also witnessed that very strongly in Europe with the floodings that have really had a huge impact on countries like Germany, Belgium, the Netherlands. On top of that, we, of course, have the forest fires that have a regular occurrence in Europe. We've had droughts that impacted agriculture in many parts of Europe. So next to the hurricanes that we've seen frequently in the uh, in the in North America, also Europe um, is being heavily hit and hopefully, uh, well, hopefully is not the right word, but let's kind of um, indeed hope that this will bring decision makers to come to much stronger decisions and really take much stronger action now and not in 20, 30 or 50 years, but really take actions in the coming years. Well, a pleasure having you on and I do thank you for your analysis. Thank you.